All right, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at um, uh, web, web programming. Um, uh, obviously, with a, a focus on the, on the, on the database and uh, data models and whatnot. Uh, so obviously, a database, uh, it will be part of some larger application. Uh, it will obviously has its, its own set of, um, uh, uh, of tasks and set of, uh, of, cons of uh, considerations, concerns, right, on, on how to maintain the data uh, normalized, uh, that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, available at all times, that um, it's not inconsistent, that uh, you make, you make your, your queries and uh, no matter how you ask the same uh, different questions that are supposed to give the same answer, they give the same answer, they don't give inconsistent answers. Uh, it's transactional, it's uh, multi-threaded, multiple users are hitting it at the same time. Uh, so, so all these are concerns of the, uh, of the database, but obviously they, they form part of a, of a larger uh, of a larger application, you know, multiple users usually hitting it at the same time. Uh, so, so we're going to focus on uh, on the latest database that we we, we looked at uh, last week, uh, uh, Mongo. Now, it just so happens that Mongo uh, has become very popular in um, when it's when it's used alongside with other uh, set of technologies. Um, and uh, one of them that uh, has become f fairly fairly popular is is referred to as the uh, the mean stack. Um, uh, uh, not, nothing nothing mean about it. It's uh, it's just uh, that Mongo is just happens to be the M in the mean in this mean stack. Anybody play around with the mean stack? A couple folks. Uh, and uh, and so it's it's a uh, its responsibility is to. Uh, maintain the uh, the data of uh, of an entire application built on top of these four technologies. Uh, they're not really a, a framework. They don't really know anything about each other. Uh, usually, when you're working on a framework, uh, usually there's uh, there's abstractions that go across the entire stack. Here, these are just four technologies that work very well with one another, and has be be become very very popular. Of where Mongo is the uh, is the um, is the database, uh, Node.js, which we also played around with last week, right? That uh, where where you have uh, Mongo's uh, schemas and models and um, and uh, to access the the Mongo database, uh, and uh, and then uh, the the data is then made available uh, through uh, services. Uh, through the use of Express, very much like in Java, you make a controller and you make it a REST controller, right? And then you map URLs with those URLs, then you can access data, right? So, so, so in, in Java, you use REST controllers. Uh, here, you would use Express. Express allows you to do exactly the same thing, right? Saying, um, I have this, uh, this URL, and that URL maps to this data, right? And then you use Mongoose uh, layer to retrieve data. Uh, so, so these, so you know, half of this stack you're already somewhat familiar with. Uh, Express is is almost you know just uh, identical to what you would do in Java as a REST controller. Uh, so that is will be pretty easy to to pick up. The only thing that might be uh, fairly familiar, uh, uh, new to you, might be the Angular front end. Uh, Angular is a um, is a JavaScript uh, based, well, TypeScript uh, based uh, front end. A framework. It's an open source framework by uh, by Google. Uh, you might have uh, heard of it. It uh, allows you to create uh, fairly high level um, web applications, right? single single page applications. Uh, the architecture looks somewhat like this. You have a you have the Angular side. It usually render renders the content on the browser. So this is this is running entirely on the browser. Uh, using JavaScript to manipulate the uh, the, the web page, the DOM. So its, its responsibilities are to render a user interface, uh, interact with the user as the user clicks and drags and types, handle those events by components, uh, manipulate a, a data model internally uh, in, the, in the Angular space. All this is on the browser. Uh, and, then, and then talk to a server side uh, web services through a web, service, uh, a web client service. Uh, on the server side, uh, you have a, a middle tier called uh, implemented with uh, Node.js, uh, who receives through HTTP, you know, receives URL invocations using post, put, delete, get, uh, very much like you've, we've done with um, so far using Java REST controllers. 
so this, this maps all sorts of URLs to, to functions that, uh, that, that execute on the server. And, and that the responsibilities are the, uh, is, is to manipulate a data model uh, represented usually through a mongoose uh, data model, which we played around last week, uh, implemented through mongoose schemas. And that mongoose schema then is, uh, is, is, um, is then uh, uh, persisted into a MongoDB uh, collections. Okay. Uh, so these, these are three, three different um, processes that are talking to one another. This is a, you know, a browser somewhere in Europe talking to a server uh, somewhere or somewhere in Asia you know, with database uh, stored in the Far East or something. I don't know. So it's three different machines talking to one another. Uh, and so we'll, we'll play around with uh, implementing some of this today. Okay. All right. So I think I think the only thing that is is very very new might be this side over here, the Angular side. All right. So we'll do, you know, the the minimal possible damage here. You know, the very minimal that you would need to get get you going on a on a simple user interface. Okay. Very very simple user interface. Um, right, so, so the, the first thing would be to install Node.js, which um, uh, we did last week. Right? Node.js uh, 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 allows you to run JavaScript on your, on your machine. And we used it last week to create Mongoose uh, models to interact with uh, a MongoDB uh, database. Right? So, so we already have that already. So what we're going to do is that, you know, just, to, just to show you how to interact with third-party APIs, or where to fetch data from is uh, we're going to use this uh, this API. It's a it's a um, it's a movie database. Um, uh, folks seem to like movies, myself included. And uh, so this is a database that uh, that uh, has you know TV shows and and, and movies that you can query it uh, by by title, by director, by actors, by whatever. You can query it all sorts of things. So. Um, I've applied to the uh, usually these uh, all these um, APIs you have to apply for them. Uh, so if you're planning on using one for your project, uh, sometimes those applications take time. Uh, sometimes they, they're inst instantaneous, and whoever is the owner of the API will send you a key right away. Uh, sometimes it might take a couple of days. So if you're planning on using one of these APIs, uh, you know you should you should get to it right away. Uh, so it's, uh, it's available. This particular API is available at OMDB API. Anybody using OMDB API for their project? No? All right, good. Uh, you can visit it here, OMDB API. Uh, it used to be free. Um, now you, um, you have to become a patron. And uh, you know, I give like a dollar every month. Uh, and, and so they give you an API key so you can query it. And, and the guy does a really good job, so I should give him more. <laughs> um, so anyway, so it's an API that, uh, that allows you to query. You, you need to provide the API key every time, and then, and then allows you to query it either uh, by giving it the name of, a, the, name of a, um, the title, right? Give it the title of a, of a movie or a or TV show. Uh, whether you want a movie or a series or an episode, uh, whether you want the plot, the full plot or the short plot, whether you want an XML or in JSON format. So you can ask it for different, uh, different formatting options. Uh, so, so yeah, so this, one, this, 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 this API right here allows you to query um, uh, either, either a, uh, uh, by giving it a term or title of a movie. And it might come back with 10, 20 movies that match that title. Uh, and, uh, and, that, and, the, and, the, and the, 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 the data that comes back is, is fairly summarized. Right? It'll give you maybe the title of the movie. It'll give you uh, maybe the, uh, uh, an, an image. It'll give you maybe the rating and, and the year that it came out, for instance. Right? Just those four information, pieces of information. Uh, if you want more information, you can, you can use another, another API where you can provide the, the specific ID of a particular movie. Uh, where is it? Uh, I think, yeah, if you give it an I and you give it the, the specific IMDB ID, all right, it'll give you much more specific information about that particular movie. Right? It'll give you all the actors, 
directors, uh, ratings in Rotten Tomato. Um, it'll give you the plot. It'll give you a couple more images. Uh, much more information right, that, uh, that you, can, you can retrieve. Um, OK. Uh, now, so I already have an API a key. Let me, uh, let me go fetch it. They emailed it to me a while back. Uh, let's see, OMDB. So when you apply for it, this is what they send you. And uh, so they give you, they send you an example query. So this is a query uh, for a particular movie who has the ID TT38 whatnot, right? And this is for Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Uh, my API key is 4A24. This is my API key. Do not use my API key. Right, you can apply for your own. Okay, so we'll, we'll interact with this um, with this um, with this uh, API just to play around with today. Uh, so you can either give it a uh, an index of a of a of an existing movie, or you can give it a title. You can say the title is maybe Batman. Batman. Right, so it comes up with. Um, I'm sorry, no, uh, if, I say, um, if I say search, a, a general search term. If I say Batman, it comes back with uh, Batman Begins, uh, Batman versus Superman, uh, Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever. So it comes back with 10 results. Okay, so one of them could be used for the, for the search page, right? I think that's one of the uh, uh, requirements in the, in the project, right? Where you have uh, some summary result of a list result, right? And then another page where you, uh, or another view that displays uh, details of a particular item, a particular domain object, yes? So these two queries can be used for that. One for representing the result, right? And the other one for representing a specific domain object instance. Yes? Right, this is, this is the you know, 10, 10 summarized results of 10 movies that match the criteria Batman, uh, whereas the other one is one specific object, right, that has a particular ID, right, that uh, matches that, that specific one single object with much more information, like the writer, the director, the genre, the rating, uh, ratings by uh, internet, uh, the IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, Meta Metacritic, the Metascore, and things like that, right? Make sense? Yes. Uh, the, if it's a search term, it'll return several. It'll return 10 that match Batman. Right, but what if you use title? It'll return the first one. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so we'll, we'll use the term, search by term, so it'll return several. Yeah. Right? And we'll, search the, we'll use the one where you know the particular ID. Right. Right, so we'll use this, this one right here, right, where, where, I, where I have the ID. Right, I have the ID, so I can go fetch that specific uh, movie, because I know the unique identifier for it. Yeah, but uh, just in case, um, when you give a title, right, how does it sort, like how does it figure out which one it should return? So we're not going to use the one with title. <laughs> yeah, you can't specify which one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the other one, the, um, uh, not IMDB, the, the, uh, the search, where's the S? Yeah, this one. Uh, this one tell, it gives you the first 10. Uh, but you can ask for the next 10, the next 10, so you can paginate across any number. Also notice that the query says how many came back. There's 358 total movies that match your term, right? So you can ask for, the, it'll, by default, it'll, it'll send you the first 10, uh, but then you can ask for the next 10, next 10, you know, start at, and then give me 10 more, okay? So you can paginate forwards and backwards. All right, so let's, let's get started. Let's see. So here's a, just an example. Uh, the, the slides don't have a specific key. It uh, reminds you to use your key if you want to follow along. Uh, so that's for Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, this one, if, um, for a search term of Batman, it returns several. It tells you how many, 
how many, how many items, domain objects matched that search criteria. Uh, or if you fetch a particular Batman movie, if you know their ID. All right. OK, so let's get started. We'll, uh, we'll first work on the front end, since it's, the, uh, the, the, I think, the part where you um, where uh, the, the least that uh, we, we have covered at all uh, in this class. And it's obviously not the, not the focus of the course at all. But you, you, I think you'll need some kind of user interface, right? Uh, and I think this would be the easiest, the easiest way to get into this, right? And you can, certainly you can use any of the source code that we work on today uh, for your own purposes. You can reuse it uh, to you know, change it or modify or uh, for, your, for your own project.